Now then, welcome to a, another video. This is the EG What Happened at Cadwell Park video. If you didn't watch my Cadwell Park race vlog, then you need to go and watch it because it's easily the most dramatic day's racing I've had up until now. Hopefully, never again will I have a day quite like that. It was, uh, yeah, you've watched the video, maybe you've not, but phew, right. Long story short, we qualified on pole and then the K24 let go. We came back up to the unit, two hours round trip. Ed had the engine waiting for us out the Integra, luckily, same spec. Managed to get it in the car with about five minutes to spare for race two. Started from the back of the grid, worked my way up to second place and yeah, just drove the absolute shit out of the car. So today we're just gonna be, this might be a short video. Is it a short video? I don't know, it might be a short video, but we're gonna have a look at the K24. We're gonna strip the engine down a bit, something that I've never done before. So I'm looking forward to that, I've never really, why not start here on a K24? I've never really stripped an engine down, but I'm interested to see what's going on inside that and maybe try and work out what failed first, which is probably gonna be easier said than done, but we can have a poke around anyway on the K24, and then we're gonna do some work on the Civic, just checking over it. Um, the car was slower, in race two, we lost about four mile an hour down the back straight, which is, you know, quite significant. Could be, you know, it could be a few things. The engine's been sat around a long time, but it's probably around 20 horsepower down on where it should have been, which, you know, you've probably just seen that video if you have, so maybe we'll be repeating ourselves a bit. But as it was literally the, the most dramatic thing, full day that's ever happened, and there's some other stuff going on as well in my life, and it just, it was just a, I never want another day like that, anyway. If I can live my life and not have another day like that, I think I'll be a happy man, but... Yeah, anyway, we're gonna start on the engine. So, we'll just take the head off. Uh, well, take the, the valve cover off. Have a look at the head, see, see what's going on there, see if any metal made it up. The inlet manifold was full of oil and water, so we're pretty sure that the water jacket or whatever has been, has been breached. The engine does still turn over, just about. Can't do it by hand, but... The engine does still turn over. Uh, we, we managed to get it moving a little bit. It's, it does stop, so there's, there's obviously something going on, but we'll get into that in a second. I'm gonna set a GoPro up here or something, and yeah, let's start on the engine and see see what happened at Cadwell Park. Right, it's return of the head cam. Figured we'd go, go for this together. Might be interesting, might not. Editor's gonna have a nightmare, probably. So here's a nice clean box with only a couple of metal fragments in it. This can be the tub of engine stuff. And here is a magnetic tray with two different sized rusty razor blades in. I like rusty razor blades. We'll just put them safely there. And we've got a tub for bolts as well. Notice the paint markers here. That was from the motor club. Sealed the engine at Mallory, I think. Where are you going, chap? Hmm. Well, the cams don't look terrible. It's the K24A high performance apparently from Japan, this engine. Yeah, there's quite a lot of little metal floating about. I don't know if you can see that. A lot of specs, but no massive scoring or anything on the cams. That looks all right. One thing that we need to do, which Josh reckons that the mighty Jewalt won't be able to get the crank bolt off. Well, he's, he's suspicious that it might not be able to get the crank bolt off. So can the mighty Jewalt mated with the cheapest eBay sockets, get the crank bolt off. <laughs> fucking, you what, mate? You fucking doubted me. I didn't doubt you, mate. I thought you'd do it, but, you know, some people were not as confident as I was. So we need this off to get the chain cover off. I, I know a bit about these, I just don't really, yeah, I've never done it myself, so. Get the chain cover off to get the chain off. We should probably take the water pump off as well at some point. Um, let's just start by getting the head off, because I've never done it before and it's the most interesting part. They're all 12, I think. Yes, are you a 10? No. Uh, we probably need to take 
Problem is when we take the timing chain cover off, we're gonna have oil come out as well, so I'll try and find another bucket. Ah, I need to lower the Integra down as well. It's on a bit of a dodgy jet. So this cam is the one that we were hoping is okay. And there's a, no, no. I thought it was a big score, but it was just a piece of metal. Can you see it all right? It looks pretty good. This is the cam that we want to be good. So, hmm. Put that somewhere safe, like going there with them? No. We need some long boxes. Guessing we can keep the sensors in because they're not really doing anything. There's some tension in it though. Is this full rocker assembly they're going to lift off in one piece? Is that what we're getting to? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? I think that's what we're getting to. The full rocker thing's going to pull off in one, isn't it? If I undo that, maybe? Yeah? So, my current theory is that this is going to lift off in one. Don't know. Maybe. Maybe, uh, with enough, see I'm not even using a hammer, I'm using a mallet, a Tommy mallet. Uh, so I've undone the two bolts here, and there's one bolt here, obviously it used to bolt through there as well, I can't see any other bolts, and I feel like, if we just put this all back down, chilling, oh, that's got stuck there, so maybe, maybe me prying, without understanding how it works, it's caused some things to touch where they shouldn't have touched. Get down there, lad. Come on. Nope. Oh. Right, so the rockers are where they should be now. Will that full assembly... I've heard people say the word... That's what I'm thinking. I've heard people say rocker assembly before, so... What I'm thinking is maybe... Yeah. Oh. It is springing, sprung in. I think... Ah, I think I remember Josh doing this. I think, I think I remember he put like big cable ties around it to hold it together. When I say I remember Josh doing this, this would have been at least five years ago. So when I was sharing a unit with him. Yeah. 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 No way to put it, yeah. Put it back on there. Yeah, no. Uh that nice and clean. Ow. Oh, I need to sneak the cable ties. Figured it out and we did it. Well, I remembered a little bit, so Head bolts. I guess that means you can stay in, but they look like multi splines, which is not something I think I have a lot of. That's fucking tight. Off as well, 
rubbish. I'm heating that now. It's got some gravity in it. Um, there should be a piston in there. There is not a piston in there. Oh. Uh, grab the camera, I've got dirty hands, but for YouTube. So, the cylinder four, uh, cylinder three. And you have a lot of water in there. Look at that cylinder wall. The line is fucked. Wow. Look at that. Jesus. Where's the piston gone then? <laughs> the piston's completely gone. What? If we look at the head. Ooh. What the fuck? Something's gone terminally wrong on cylinder three. Apparently the car was knocking, you know, I, I couldn't hear it. I don't know if it's on the GoPro or not. I've not looked at the videos yet, but. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I can see bits of stuff in the sump. Uh, we need to see if the uh, the new baffle that I bought is any good. Can you see the light? Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> What the fuck, man? Okay. Well, that's pretty broken, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I'm not gonna try and turn it over until I look at what's in the sump, really. Right, we're gonna turn the engine over now, upside down, take the sump off. Um, like I said, I don't wanna rotate the crank or anything until... I wanna make sure that... Well, we wanna try and save the baffle, really, because that's... You know, it's, it's a drop in the ocean to the rest of the engine, but it's still, I don't know, about 200 quid or something out of the baffle or something. I don't, I don't want to spend that money again if we can save it, that'd be nice. But Matt's come to give us an hand to turn the engine over anyway. Do you remember Matt from the DC, how's your DC5 driving? Oh, yeah, it drives mint on it, mega, yeah, yeah. All right, let's get this turned over. Watch your hands. Oh, they've all done it. And that one. Oh, no. Hang on, there's, there's another bucket here. Okay, hang on, the bar's gone out. Just let it, there, let it drip for a bit. Oh, what's this doing? Over there if you want. Oh no, I need, we need another box. Uh, uh, no, that'll be alright. That did have a little spider family sitting in it for a bit, but not anymore. Baffle looks mostly okay. I think the oil pump might have. That uh... oh, might be all right. <laughs> that big chunk of piston. Oh yeah. There's the. Um, there's what do you call it? Piston ring. Very nice. Oh, wow, that's, is that a big bit of piston, isn't it? Yeah, it's good, yeah. Wow, that's a trophy. Might try and sell that as a key ring. <laughs> Fucking hell. Sweet. Oh. How's it gonna fall off now? 
box. That's because there's another fucking rock in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, magnet. Where is that magnet? The torch, that one. There you go. Yeah, Whoa! Jesus, man. Where'd you put the other piece? We don't even have to know why. We All we have to do is, when I post this video in five to six weeks' time, people are going to tell us what's happened. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. The whole of YouTube yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to worry about trying to figure out what's happened. So, what, the bearing failed and then everything just went kaput from there, maybe? But why would the bearing yeah. fail? I mean, none of the other ones even look worn. It doesn't look like it's been worn out. That's got a big chunk. It's got a fucking heart, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, prognosis, diagnosis. I don't know. What do you think? You're a mechanic. It's got hot, isn't it? Yeah. Does that say land sale? Yeah, land sale tires. Nice. Are you an approved land sale driving innovation? Is that what it says? Nice. Yeah, I reckon it's got hot. Cause play, and then that's probably why it was knocking. Yeah, so this bearing failed at some point and then just catastrophically blown up because I kept driving it. Yeah. Nice. You used to turn radio up. Yeah, yeah. I honestly didn't even hear it, but people on people spectating said they could hear it knocking, so... I mean, the oil squirt is missing, but that could have just got taken out in <laughs> friendly fire, right? I was expecting more damage, like, across the board, not just one totally fucked. All right, so that's the end of my case. Mother, come on, man, I'm doing a video. That's the end of, of my K24A. We're now on an A3. What's the difference? That one came from Japan and high performance. Uh, but that is an early engine. This is a later engine. This has got slightly. Uh, you Honda people can tell us the difference, right? RBB1, RBB2, maybe even three. I don't know. Uh, it's just stamped two, but. Uh, it's quite a late engine this one, whereas this one was very much an early one. What caused the problem? I don't know. There's no other signs of wear or anything else. The, you know, the bars and the, the rods, uh, the bearings, everything looks fine. Obviously the head gasket's smashed, but that would have happened, you know, in the chaos that ensued after whatever, I, I guess the bearing failed and then, you know, the caused this to happen and to cause that to happen and you know I mean the engine slowed up right so maybe the slowing up was the bearing failing and then me me continuing to drive it is what caused the rest of the, the madness and yeah you can say what you want maybe I should have stopped straight I did think about obviously stopping straight away but if you if your car just starts going slow then what would you do when your car starts slowing down right if you imagine think about it from my way I'm in qualifying right if I just pull in and start looking for issues on the car then I then lose the time you know to test drive it and just driving it I was trying to figure out what was going wrong and if it was a bearing that was going anyway, the engine would have been toast anyway, right? It wouldn't have been able to, to fix the engine. We're always going to have to replace the engine if, you know, if that is what failed, the bearing failed, and then, you know, the chaos after it. And the reason I continued driving was I thought, well, we're trying to figure out what the hell it was. You know, anything can cause like a bit of a power loss, can't it? That's all I felt. I didn't hear any banging or anything like that, so. All right, well, that's all from today. This was just like a little fact-finding mission, mostly about the engine, what happened to the engine. What are your theories, internet? What do you reckon happens? Huh? What do you reckon? I mean, the engine raced for two years already, so you know, it's not the easiest life. You know, it's been it's been hot a fair few times, but looks to me like something just let go. Did it start knocking? Did the bearing expire for whatever reason? If if the bearing did expire, why do all the other bearings look so good? Hmm? Why does my piston look like that? Come on, internet, now is your time to shine. We need answers. We need answers. Yeah. I think I figured out the rest. Obviously, I'll put the oil cooler back on and stuff like that. I might, I might put the one off the DC2 on, because I know that's not got bits of metal floating around it, but... Um, the next race is not until five weeks' time. Uh, changes. Uh, nothing really. I was thinking about making it lighter anyway, and we're definitely gonna have to go back to the dyno and try and see where the power's gone. Uh, put the intake spacer back on and stuff like that. So there'll be plenty more videos to come preparing the car for the next round at Snetterton. 
Um, in other news, I'm going to be doing a video tomorrow with Kevin at Donington, which will be quite fun. Just kind of back to back driving, seeing if, uh, is it the car or is it Kevin? What's the problem? Why, why was he not quite feeling it on his return to racing? It was his return to racing, but he never went full Kevin mode. So tomorrow I'm going to try and get him to go full Kevin mode. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, other than that, I'm racing again in the MR2s in a few weeks at Snetterton as well. That'll be before I'm racing in this, but I don't think anything else is really happening. I'd like to touch some of them at some point, so yeah, whatever happens, like and subscribe, and I'll see you there. What happened then? You gotta tell me though, I need to know the answers.